Okay, so here is a reteach of 22.5, solving nonlinear systems. So this is really, really easy. This is stuff that we've been doing for a while now. And they give us a quadratic here that's graphed over on the right-hand side. And what they want us to do is they want us to determine how many solutions there are when we have another function, x plus 1 here. So I graph x plus 1. So my y-intercept's 1, my slope is 1, so I go up 1 over 1. And if I draw that line, there are going to be two solutions. There are two places, there are two places where it intersects. Okay. And then we go to the next function. So is that I'll have to wipe this out, sorry. So No, I still keeps the red one. Sorry. Okay, I'll just do it in a different color. Let's do blue. So h of x, h of x is x plus 2, so that means my y-intercept's at 2. Again, my slope is 1, so I go up 1 over 1. If I draw this line, I'll do the best I can here. That actually intersects only at one place, um, and that is right here, but I can't without a straight edge, I can't do it, okay? And then j of x, which is x plus three. So my y-intercept's here, go up one over one, draw that line, and that never crosses the quadratic. So again, going back to quadratic formula, this is our different cases. So in this case, this would be a negative number under the square root. This would be zero under the square root because that's just one answer. And then this would be a positive number under the square root where you have plus or minus. Okay, so we're doing the same thing here. And this is where you'll want to use your calculator to help you solve. Um, you'll actually have to do some of the graphing aspect of it. So I'm going to review that. So let's graph our quadratic first. Negative x squared plus 4. The 4 is not with the x, so when it's not with the x, it is what you think. So that means that's a shift up 4. The negative means that it opens down. So again, if I go over 1, this would be down 1. Go over 1, down 1. If I go over 2, 2 squared is 4. That means I go down 4 in this case, here and here. So now I can draw my quadratic. And again, this is all freehand, so I'm just doing the best I can here. Now I'll graph my line, negative 3x plus 6, so that means my y-intercept is 6, which is kind of an issue here that doesn't fall on the graph, okay? 6 would actually be kind of right up in here somewhere with a slope of negative 3, so that means I go down 1, 2, three, and then over one. Then, let me try to clean it up a little bit. Let's do that, okay. Then down three, one, one, two, three, and over one, so here. So then if I draw my line, again, this is freehand, so I'm doing the best I can. I have two solutions. And what you would want to do is use your calculator to find the intersection point for this. And if you do that, it's actually going to be x equals 2. So again, it's kind of hard to see on mine, but x would equal 2 right here, and x equals 1 right here. But since mine's freehand, I can't be precise on that. But those would be your two solutions, x equals 2, x equals 1. Uh, pay attention to the directions, whether or not they want the point of intersection. If they want the point, you have to give the y value, or if they just want the x value, 1 and 2 in this case. Um, the next one says solve the systems of equations algebraically. Okay. So let's look at doing this one algebraically. So how are you going to do that? Well, first you're going to set them equal. So you got 4x squared plus 45x plus 83. 
equals 5x minus 17. And then depending on your methodology, uh, again, what you could do, since you don't show work on the homework, just use the calculator again if you want to and do your graphing and find the intersection. I'm going to do it algebraically, so I'm going to move I'm going to move the 5x over, and I'm going to move the negative 17 over. So this now becomes 4x squared what, plus 40x, because you subtract 5x, and then you add 17, so that would be plus 100 equals 0. Take out my GCF here, which is 4. It's going to be x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 0. Uh, factors of 25 that add to give you 10 are 5 and 5. This is actually a perfect square trinomial. So I have 4 times x plus 5 squared equals 0. So this really only has one solution, and that is x equals negative 5. Uh, and again, we refer to that as a double root, double root. We used this term before uh, when we were doing these. It's referred to as a double root because it's really the same answer used two different times. It's x plus 5 times x plus 5. So again, if they want a point, you take negative 5 and it's equal to 0. So your point is negative 5, 0. Uh, that's where those two intersect. It's at the vertex in this case, and you can think about it again graphically. This is shifted to the left five. It opens up with a vertical stretch of four, and that's where it crosses the x-axis. So that's doing it algebraically. All right, word problem. I'm gonna write over the top of this down here on the bottom so I got some room to work this out. Uh, while I'm doing that, an elevator in a hotel moves at 20 feet per second, leaving from the ground floor its height in feet after t seconds is given by the formula. A bolt comes loose in the elevator shaft above, and its height in feet after falling for t seconds is given by another formula. At what time and at what height does the bolt hit the elevator? So you have one that's for the bolt, one that's for the elevator, Basically, all you're asking is when does this, oops, sorry, that's a little big. Let's make that smaller. When does this equal this? So again, you're just setting up an equation. And you're solving. And how you solve again, completely up to you. You can do it graphically on the calculator and do this as y1, do this as y2, find where they intersect. Since we are talking about time, again, you're only looking for the positive solution. I'll work this one out algebraically. So again, we'll move that over. So that's negative 20t plus 200 equals zero. Um, try to factor here. So I'm gonna try to take out a GCF, which would be We'll have negative 4. That's going to leave 4t squared plus 5t uh, plus, sorry, minus, that should be minus 50. Okay, equals 0. Uh, try to factor. If you do bottoms up, that's going to be negative 200. So factors of 200 that subtract to give you 5. <clears throat> so factors of 200 that subtract to give you 5, you start going through your list. You could say like 10 and 20, but those subtract to give you 10. You try to think of something else um, to give you 5. Mm, let's just think. Maybe... Uh, and there aren't any, so that means this one's not factorable. So you've got to find some alternative method of solving. How do you do that? Uh, I'm going to go with quadratic formula. So quadratic formula here, x equals, now again, identify everything. There's your a, there's your b, there's your c. 
we can negate this over here because that can't be part of the solution since it's a GCF and does not have a variable. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, again, since this is time, we're only thinking about the positive case. I'll scroll up here to have a little bit more room. So again, you can do all this multiplication in your calculator, but I'm gonna multiply all that out. So that gives me negative five plus, that's gonna be 25, I gotta do this in my head a little bit. 25, that's 200 times four would be 800. So square root of 825 over eight. Now again, I'm ignoring the negative case here because time can't be negative and that would make a negative number for sure. So what's the square root of 825? So you gotta try to simplify if it wants a perfect or radical answer. So what will go into 825 that's a perfect square? Uh, 25. <clears throat> so that gives you negative, oops, let's go back to black. Negative five plus so that's 25 times 33. That gives you 825 for 8. Square root of 25 is 5. So I got negative 5 plus 5 on the square root of 33, all divided by 8. That would be my exact answer. And I'm just going to type that in on my calculator. Negative 5 plus 5 square root of 33. Divide by 8 is approximately 2.965. So that is an example of algebraically. Again, you could have got that just using the calculator itself. So hopefully this has helped you uh, just be sure you know how to use the calculator, and if you have questions, make sure you ask.